Hello once again, Star Wars and Unboxing fans. Welcome to another episode of Darth Tuba's Star Wars Unboxing Show. I'm your host, Darth Tuba. So, as kind of a follow-up, sort of follow-up, to some of the things that we were doing um, in our little uh, New Jersey Toy Con uh, toy run, I have a few items here that we're going to do some unboxing, but a couple of other ones as well. One thing, again, we're not going to unbox, I just realized that sitting here are our Build-A-Droid figures, so I apologize for them. Hope nobody was hoping for that. Yeah, I haven't decided how I'm going to handle those yet. I might do an unboxing, but uh, I'm not sure yet. But what we do have are, here are some couple of items that we that we picked up at the Toy-Con. We picked up uh, Black Series number 89, which is triple zero from the Dr. Afra comics. And of course, Chopper from Rebels, number 84 in the Black Series line. And we also have this Toys R Us exclusive Yoda, uh, holographic Yoda from the Revenge of the Sith line. And we have the three pack from uh, Jabba's Court Denizens, of which the only one I have right now is the Spider Droid. So these will all find a place on the barge. Okay. And in addition to that, we have um, a couple of other things. We have this Force Awakens uh, First Order Snow Trooper. I should say Last Order. Or sorry, Last Order. <laughs> Maybe the next film will be the Last Order. No, uh, Last Jedi, because we never saw this at all. We never saw this kind of trooper, I don't think, at all in the uh, Force Awakens, but we did see them in The Last Jedi. And notice this is 75% uh, off. There was a, uh, a small distributing toy chain that was in the um, to a local mall that I was shocked to see. Like I haven't seen toys in a mall other than a Disney store in years since KB Toy and Hobby uh, closed. So this one was there, it was 75% off, so I think I paid $7 for this. Now I like these big figures, but I'm not paying 30, 40, 50 bucks for them. But seven bucks, like less of a price than, than an actual three and a three and quarter inch figure. Yeah, you can bet I'm gonna pick up some of those. And then uh, one of my last um, shelf talks, you've, we stumbled across these two, Ahsoka and Jyn So These are like higher end figures, probably also available uh, in the, the vintage, the, they've been re-released in the vintage line, I think. If they're not, if they haven't, they will be eventually. So these two are gonna get unboxed as well. So. First of all, as I'm getting started with this, we'll start with uh, Chopper. Uh, I do want to say that uh, that Toy Con that I went to was awesome. It was a small venue. Check in your local places. You might find toy shows. Uh, you never think to look at toy shows. You always look at like Comic Cons or you know something Con, Wonder Con, da, 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 da. and you never think that toys have their own conventions too. Toy brands and it's just a lot of dealers and you got to do a lot of wheeling and dealing. And some people are not comfortable with that. It is. It can be sensory overload. Um, for all the stuff that's there, but nonetheless, it's um, it's pretty cool. So, all right, this is cool. Chopper comes with, hang on, a couple of different options here. He's got his. I don't know if I'm gonna have all of this out. I'm, this is this might be one box that I keep because of the fact that he has a few things here. First, you have his little, and I'll get close-up photos of this. You have his launching mechanism, so he just kind of has a little pose that he launches. That's kind of cool. Okay, he also makes him a similar height to the other figures. You can pull this out, replace it with a wheel. Oh, hope I didn't do that wrong. Did I do that wrong? I don't think so. I have to look at this one because yeah, they never give you instructions for this. But yeah, so this is kind of a you know to give you give you his uh, his kind of standard way about. Yeah, it's a little different than the than the center foot. Now this also offers a third leg, which I am not quite sure why he has. Somebody leave a leave a comment as to why. I think maybe it just just be a replacement leg um, versus this one. I guess because I will say that for those who don't know, Chopper is essentially a kind of pieced together droid. He's so old that he's been his every part's been replaced. So I guess this is just one way to do that. So really cool. But I think ultimately my display option will be the the full out, you know, exploding into the air kind of thing. Um, I just think that's really cool. So for this one, whenever there's a when I, I will be honest, I do not keep these packages, these boxes very much, unless the figure has more than one part that you have options for. And then in that case, I do keep them. And uh, I have a few like that. So there's there's Chopper. Um, fun fact, um, for the whole run of the show, the four seasons, no one knew who did the voice of Chopper. Um, there was one 
for, I'm sure people know this who watch the channel, but there was one um, celebration uh, panel where Dave Filoni was on stage and he's the supervising director of Rebels and a little girl who was sitting kind of on stage in a little peanut gallery kind of side, side seats asked who does the voice of Chopper and you know Dave Filoni has always been really good at keeping secrets but he said you know I'll tell you if you promise not to tell anyone so he went over and he whispered really really quietly and no one heard and that was like only the second season or so so it was a whole two years went by before they finally put the voice of Chopper in the credits at the very last episode and that was of course Dave Filoni himself who did the voice which I thought was really really cool um, very excited to see what he has up his sleeve for the Disney streaming service for more animation whether it's the return of the Clone Wars versus you know plus um, you know other things that are coming on uh, down the pipeline all right so next up we've got Yoda holographic Yoda from the Toys R Us oh this is this is cool this comes with a, a nifty base so it's not good for my my display my, my display um, little clamshell cases but that's all right some of my figures can find a home somewhere else I've always loved the it's tough to get them out of us. <laughs> Ooh, I just lost part of it. Hang on. Um, oh no, I think that. Oh, there it is. I've always. Uh, here it is. Oh, it's. Apparently he lost his arm. <laughs> uh, okay, there it is. Yeah, I've always been a fan of the holographic figures because I just thought, well, that's a really cool thing. I will say I do have one complaint that this didn't just come off. This like won't stay back on. Hmm. So I wasn't aware that yo. Oh, is that better? Yeah. Nope. Well, that stinks. Okay. Um. So Yoda is you know the nice articulation, his arms and his elbows, but articulations are only so good. Um. If they're only as good as keeping the <laughs> keeping the arm on it. All right, so that's not good. I think I got it back. Okay, and you know what? Again, these are plastic, plastic figures. Okay, they're child playthings, as Woody would say. Toy Story Four in theaters this week, so go see it. I'm heading out, I think, tonight to see it. And I'm trying to see if he has a. I don't think he has a foot peg, so. What I can, and again, I'll get some close-ups of this. I normally like the holographic figures because I think that it is a really cool effect. You know that that kind of translucent uh, look to the figures. Did he? Did I block him? There he is. And again, I'll get some close-ups. Um, pretty cool, uh, but I think that you know, I don't know if the plastic that is made to make it translucent. I have no knowledge of this. Maybe someone can leave a comment. Um, about if the plastic that they use for the translucent figures is the same plastic is it does it start to loosen up does it weaken remember these toys are like 19 years old or no uh, 9 2005 uh, 14 years old okay and you know maybe the you know, most I don't think toy manufacturers design toys to last forever I think they design them to basically be played with so who knows all right but uh, as a display piece, it's really cool, and uh, I'm, in, I'm enjoying that. So let's look, move on to Triple Zero. I have to be confessing here. I am a collector of the figures, but I'm not a reader of too many comics. So I've never read the Dr. Afro books, comic books, so I have no idea who this is. I just know that he looks like... I like him. He looks cool. He looks like an evil version of, uh, of 3 po he comes with a second set of hands. The hands that are currently on the figure look like Edward Scissorhands, like they have like tools. <laughs> it's like a Swiss Army knife. So that's kind of cool. All right, so I, ooh, that saw doesn't really good. That reminds me, I have to go to the dentist today. I'm hoping I'm not gonna run into somebody like that. But um, pretty cool looking character. And once again, I will keep the figure because, or the figure box because we do need, we have to store his extra limbs and stuff. So pretty cool stuff. Let's look on to the Jabba's Court Denizens. The actual uh, names of these are Bubo, which is the dog-like creature. I think he's the one that, like, when you first, when um, when 3PO first walks into the court, he's kind of sitting there and he goes, wah, wah, almost like a bark. 
uh, Bamar Monk, which is the spider droid, and it has a brain in it, which is where the monks, when they when they achieve full enlightenment, at least in the expanded universe, when they achieve full enlightenment, they remove their brains from their regular bodies and put them in these droid spiders. There's, I, I don't know if I want to see a whole movie about that, but I definitely want to see some type of an animated series about that. And then Wool Capesite, which is this little tiny thing with a tongue, uh, has a little suction on it. Uh, I have a larger version of it from Sideshow that's kind of like a magnet. But these guys are just the, you know, the small figures. These will find a place prominently in the sail barge. And, uh, and again, I, I, even though I, I can't say for sure, I, I don't think a Bamar Monk would have been in the sail barge, technically speaking. But anything involving Jabba's, you know, now that I have this amazing, it's not just, what I love about the sail barge, the uh, Hasbro crowdsourced sail barge, what I love about that is that it's not just about the sail barge. It's about the fact that now we have a playset, this huge playset. Oh, geez, things coming off left and right. Oh, this is just a hook piece. Let's get that back on. I am not. I'm all butterfingers today. Sorry. Okay. There's your spider or your Bamar monk. And then we have. Let's get the little guy here. Uh, yeah. It's it's a the the barge is now a playset, and that makes it. Um, and it's also but it's also a diorama, which is so cool and makes it so much nicer for us collectors with limited amount. Now it has a little bit of a suction on it. I'll put it on the side of this box for the moment. There you go. Boop. <laughs> I don't know. It's a little suction cup. I don't know if it's going to fit everywhere, but we'll see. And then little Bubo. I'm trying to think if he's also the one. He might be the one that in the, there was an, there was an exterior shot in the evening of Jabba's palace, and he was outside, like he was chained up outside, and he, and he kind of grabbed uh, some kind of a creature and he grabbed it almost like a, like a tongue and then bleh, bleh. I think that was him I think that was this creature um, but I'm not 100% sure all right and then and of course we have a chain come on dude open up your chain ah, Hasbro Hasbro always making me have to just trying to get this Sorry, I'm literally like cutting into the plastic here to get it. Almost there. There it is. All right, sorry about that. And I guess he is hooked on to this, like a little leash. Kind of sad. That's like Le Leia's leash. It's kind of kind of uncomfortable. But. I always love to hear when people get all upset about the slave Leia business with Jabba, and I always love Carrie Fisher's response to it, and she said, just remember, I choked Jabba to death with that leash, with that collar. So she used her slave uh, devices to actually end Jabba's life, so keep that in mind. All right, so now we have some couple of, uh, these are Black Series figures, and for a while, the Black Series, when, you know, when they were switching up to just simpler five point of articulation figures. They also, they were still making figures like this that were a little bit more articulated. Oh, I can't, I don't know what is with me today. Uh, and this one looks like I have to keep because of, um, it, it has sabers without the blades. So that will get over there. All right. I am so loosey goosey today. Sorry about that folks. Okay, so, um, little side note here about Ahsoka. So Ahsoka Tano's has the two blades, right? Has a longer blade and a, so and a shorter blade. Well, in Galaxy's Edge in Disneyland, I've been reading articles that a lot of the merchandise is selling out faster than they can stock it, which to me isn't very shocking. I mean, keep in mind that this merchandise is only available in Galaxy's Edge. It's not like, you know, like when you go to Star Tours and you go to the Tatooine Traders or one of the places there, you know, you can get, they'll have a lot of items there that are available there, but you can also get your local Walmart or Target or Toy Store. So um, Galaxy's Edge, they made a big thing to say, all this merchandise is only going to be available in Galaxy's Edge. So right now there's only one in the world, one store or one set of stores. 
and uh, and they had a lot of people going in the last month just to go to visit Galaxy's Edge. A lot of people that weren't even Disneyland fans, like Star Wars fans. So they said that with the legacy lightsabers, for example, they can go to Sabi's workshop and build and build a lightsaber. But then you can also just go into, I think it's called Doc Undar's um, uh, antiquities, and you can go in there and you can get a legacy lightsaber, which is a copy of. You know, Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker, Obi Wan, Kylo Ren, Rey, whatever. Well, apparently the only sabers that are left right now are Ahsoka Tano's, and I don't think it's because she's not popular. I think it's because hers is one of the only ones that's a double. You have to buy two. You have to buy the long one and the short one. So that one's left because it's more expensive. And I think um, Darth Maul's single bladed, and I think that's just because people wanted the Darth Maul double blade. And lastly, um, there's a Jedi Temple Guard that the Jedi Temple Guard saber. So who knows? But uh, that's pretty cool. So I'm I'm uh, I, I can't believe that that's there. I mean, I'm 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 kind of disappointed that I'm not there now. I'm hoping because there, you know, every time I watch videos of that, I, I keep saying to myself, all right. And, and and you know, some of my some of my listeners and some of my you know students who listen and watch. You know, they say like, well, what are you gonna get? Are you gonna get everything? Like, of course I'm not gonna get everything. I would need a whole additional basement to get everything, but I wanna pick and choose what I wanna get. And um, the stuff that they have there, I mean, of course I'm gonna build a saber. Of course we're gonna build a droid or two. But then beyond that, um, I'm not sure. I, I, I think that uh, there's so much available. I just hope that, you know, they can keep up with the demand because I'm not gonna get there most likely until November or even December. So I'm really hoping that they, are able to do something to kind of you know keep the product going and not just you know make some stuff and stop but then again there's nothing in there that I'm like oh my god I absolutely have to have there's nothing like that there's just really cool niche items you know me I love the niche items people who watch my channel I love the niche weird kind of unusual items um, and there's a lot of that there I'm just hoping that they continue to, to do that all right so second to last year I know we're moving along here um, we have our Jin Urso. Now, Jin Urso, ooh, this comes with a weapon that I'm hoping I can put together. Looks like I can actually put this weapon together as if it's like a, it's, oh my God, what is with this? Okay, I'm convinced now it's not me. I'm sorry, it is not me. It is the, <laughs> well, look at that. Now, where did he go? Oh, there it is. I hope this thing isn't like buzzing into the microphone. Holy cow. I'm so sorry, people. That is just freaking strange. So I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think, is it like this? And then like this? I think that's kind of how it goes. Yeah, it's like very, the problem with these little tiny things is that you need, um, I wonder if it's, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it looks like they, yeah, it does fit together there, good. All right, I'll give that to Jin. Oop, came off. Unfortunately, some of these figures are not gonna be able to do much because that's one, like, one of the problem with these. It's so easy to get to be loose. All right, so if I wonder if I can get this to, if I can get her to, pose with this see that's the nice thing I do miss about the yeah. the thing I miss about the um, unless let me just check one more thing here. Unless it's supposed to be just like this no there definitely has to be all three pieces there it's fine if it doesn't really work I don't really need it but just one of those things where it's like, oh my goodness. Hasbro, you're killing me. I swear that, I swear to God that Hasbro, or I should say, I don't want to swear to God. I swear that Hasbro deliberately designs these things to be kind of loosey goosey in the effort that they just figure people are going to just say, ah, screw it. I don't really need to do that. And I'm like, yeah, but. I want to do it. I want to make it there. All right. So it doesn't look like if you try to if you try to handle the weapon too much, okay, um, it does come apart. So you have to be careful with it. Boy, this was a major, major. Uh, this has been a major, major 
faux pas episode probably get like a thousand hits like my, I was looking back on it because I was like I was looking back on my episodes and I was um trying to uh you know organize make up some playlists and stuff to make it easier for people to watch well I happened to notice that my the, the one episode way back when my first year was um Way, way back, I've only done it for three years, but um, early episode was uh, this one with the Walmart kind of uh, app-enabled little R2-D2, and I, people were just commenting, I mean, it wasn't a huge amount of comments, but that was the only one that received a bunch of dislikes, you know, and I, and I, I didn't get upset at it, I just kind of, to people, if those people still watch, I just said, you know, well, you're right, I'm, <laughs> I wasn't doing this right, I was an idiot, um, so uh, thank you for watching anyway, though, uh, just because it, it makes no sense to try to defend it because it was it was you know I was looking at it I should have looked at the directions but I was trying to do a live unbox not a live but I was trying to do an unboxing kind of on the fly because that's what people are going to do when they when they find this material that's kind of why I did that so um, it turns out that uh, most people don't mind it so it's fine okay and um, I haven't received too much negative comments but you know that was one of them but of course that one got like you know <laughs> like 800 views or some crazy thing so what are you going to do all right last but not least 75% off. I understand, you know, anything. People say, oh, see, Star Wars is dead. Star Wars isn't popular anymore because all the stuff's selling. I said, I don't believe that for an instant. I don't believe that Star Wars is not popular. All you got to do is go into Galaxy's Edge. And by the way, this week, they lifted the whole, like, four-hour window and everything else. And the place is, like, packed for the day. They, they do, Disneyland's doing a good job of keeping everybody, keeping things spaced. But it doesn't change the fact that there's a lot going on there. So... Um, I get it. I understand it. I, I I realize what you know. People are are you know. Lots of people want to go see it, but don't ever say that it's not popular. It is very popular. It will rival, um, you know, the uh, Harry Potter's Wondrous World quite a bit. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm a big. I like Harry Potter, but I'm a big Star Wars. I'm, I'm you know my loyalty is always going to be to Star Wars. But I feel like at the end of the day. There's room for both. There's room for competition. I think it's healthy. It allow look at like if it hasn't if it wasn't for Harry Potter, who knows if, if we would have even gotten this space. You gotta remember that too. People say that like you know. Now, having said that, people ask me, are you ever gonna do are you ever gonna do like trip reports from Hollywood Studios? Or sorry, from Universal Studios. And the answer to that is not likely. And it's not because I don't enjoy um, um, Universal Studios. I do enjoy it. But the, but the thing is that it works like this. It costs a lot of money to travel to Orlando. It costs a lot of money to do any of the stuff that we do in Disney. And I go to Disney multiple times a year. So there comes a point where I have to make choices. And the way I see it is at the end of the day, I will choose to do Disney over Universal because there's just not enough properties Universal that I'm that interested in that I'd be willing to pay an extra couple of hundred dollars for me to go into those parks. Now, that's not to say I'll never go. It just says that I'm not likely to go that often. As I said, I like Harry Potter. I am not a Harry Potter hater. I think Harry Potter is great. I appreciate um, the books. I read all. I read most of the books. I think I got through about five books. Um, but I appreciate the attention to detail. I appreciate the world building. And I see a lot of similarities between the two universes, except obviously, you know, Harry Potter is Earth-based. You know, it's not in another planet. But I do see a lot of really likable things, likable qualities. You know, I knew I was going to drop off my my two uh, ladies there. I'll pick you up again. Don't worry. I'm getting to you. Just this poor stormtrooper blaster. It's hard to get at. There we go. So anyway, um, but as far as me going and going there, I mean, I, I did, I did attend. We had a band trip, and uh, about four years ago, and I went in. We took a day. We were in Disney most of the time, but we took a day and we went over to Universal Studios. The, I think the Diagon Alley had just opened. So I had gone. I said, "All right, this is cool. We'll we'll do it. We'll check it out." And we went in, and we took the train, which was cool. You know, we took the train, and we did the... Let me just make sure I'm doing this right. 
think I am. Yes, I am. We did the train, Hogwarts Express, but we had to wait an hour and a half to do the hour the Hogwarts Express, and that goes from one park to the other. So we did that, and then we went. We didn't do the Wondrous World. We couldn't eat anywhere because it was too crowded. We had ice cream, which took us another 35 minutes. So I was like, all right, I like this, but I really feel like the crowd aspect was just too much. And, and, and because I am now, because I'm not in the same level of fan to, uh, to the Harry Potter universe as I am Star Wars, I was less willing to do that. So um, that was the last time I was there. It, I don't really miss it. Um, someday we'll go back, I'm sure. But there are no Star Wars um, or Disney things there not yet anyway although Disney does own like now, now they own like a couple of the pro a couple of the things that are there now which is kind of funny when you think about it like Marvel they own Simpsons who knows but uh, anyway so I'm sorry we're going off on a tangent there for a minute but let's get back to this um, I really like when they combine soft goods with this okay so this is really cool I always love this It's such a throwback to the snow trooper um, I'm sorry I didn't get more um, action in the movies I love though that in this that these I like these figures I like these figures a lot okay the the only thing I don't like about them is the price and I'm sorry to say that because you know and again you have to pick and choose you, know, you can't collect everything but I figured the things that I don't collect if they go on sale then yeah maybe then I will collect them so Anyway, this is my uh, my first order. Is it the first order snow trooper? Yeah, first order snow trooper. He'll he'll stand behind beside my Praetorian guard and kind of guard the Star Wars room. So um, really really cool. Uh, so here we have a lot of different size figures here, which is awesome. And uh, all 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 told, it's really good. Now I know I didn't get to the trash compactor two pack that uh, I mean, I'm still deciding what I want to do with that. I may not do an unboxing. Those were very rare. Um, and I'm also just looking at it and seeing, you know, they come with backdrops, but they're not plastic, they're cardboard. So I'm, I'm not 100% sure what I want to do with that. So maybe we'll do it in the future, maybe not. Um, so we do have a couple of, um, a couple more just kind of uh, odds and ends episodes coming up. And I do believe there's something coming in the mail, a, a high-end item that I should be getting very soon, and we'll get that into an unboxing. So, and then an upcoming, a, upcoming trip to Disney World, which will include some walkthroughs of uh, some of the Disney Star Wars locations pre Galaxy's Edge in Walt Disney World, so it'll be really exciting. So, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification button, uh, smash the bell, or smash the notification button. I don't know what that means. Why smash it? Don't don't smash it. Just lightly tap it. That's better. Um, and then uh, check me out. Check out all my videos. As I said, I put them in playlists so you can uh, kind of run them in the background. Anybody who's going on Instagram and Twitter at Darth Thuba, thank you. But do me a favor. Try to, to, to go to the full link, especially in Instagram. Try to go to the full link and just turn on the video and watch because the more views I get, the better off things are. Okay, again, I'm not trying to make money here. I'm not trying to do anything but, you know, spread the word. But I'd love to get more views if I can just because that always works in our favor if we can do that. Okay, so again, Thank you so much for watching. Check me out on, on Facebook at Darth Tuba Star Wars Unboxing page. And uh, until the next time, may the Force be with you.